Hey guys, back with another video. I realized I'm long overdue of uploading. I think the last time I uploaded was my November 11th video, uh, Fisher and Remembrance Day. So um, today, we've got a couple changes to our setup. So today's video is going to be an updated setup. Um, the old setup, I'll leave there if you guys want to look at that one too. So yeah. So in my old setup, as you guys know, I was I was rolling with a Fenwick Eagle 10 foot 6 medium heavy uh, fast action salmon uh, bait casting rod, part of the salmon sea rod series. So um, I think it was late October. It was the last Friday, I think. Me and my dad were on the state river out in Mission, and uh, we were chum salmon fishing, and we were having a good time. Caught lots of fish. It was around 5 p.m. And uh, my dad was like, let's get out of here, it's starting to get cold, it's starting to get dark, and we going to be home for dinner. So, um, you know, I was like, alright, I'll be up in there, I'll be up in uh, 45. So I was casting, you know, having a good time. In 45 minutes, I landed seven fish. I, I uh, hooked and landed seven fish, all cleanly, all in the mouth, or the tip of the nose. Um, nothing worth keeping, you know, they all had blotches on them. I was like, yeah, you know what, not, not, not really worth keeping. The last one, however, you know, after the seven fish in 45, eight fish, nice female. I know you guys might be like, what are you calling a fish nice? It's, it's late October in the chum salmon run, man. Everything's starting to color up. And I mean like this thing, sure, yeah, spawning colors. It had no white blotches on it. it wasn't dead, obviously. It had nothing decomposing on it. it. Had no scars on it. And... I think that it was not spawned yet. I, hard to tell because I didn't get a chance to land this fish. Okay. So I'm fighting this fish. You know, I've got it, it's maybe like six and a half, seven feet away from me, and I'm just sitting there, trying to trying to take my time with it, reel it in, because you know, you don't want to haul a fish up onto the rocks, because even if you don't keep it, then you know, just thrash in. It could pick up concussion, get hurt itself on the rocks, and you don't want that to happen. So you know, I'm taking my time with it. And suddenly my rod just snaps, just snaps right in half, above the joint where the rod connects. And I'm like, bro, what the heck? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there, sh I'm standing there shocked on the water. I'm the only one there. Everyone had back with them left. So, like, I was the only person on the river. And I'm just sitting there like, wow. <laughs> I've never broken a rod until that point. I've seen my dad break a rod. I've seen a brother break a rod. I've seen... I don't know how many people break rods, but it's never happened to me. So the rod breaks, I lose the fish, and I walk, I walk up to the car, and I'm like, Dad, my rod broke. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> so we go home, and on the way home, we stop at Cabela's to see if they have any replacement rods, because two days of my rod breaking, I'm going, I, I, was, I went out again with my friends. So we went, we went to Cabela's, they have nothing. Like... Their stock completely empty. The only thing they had was like an 11 3 rod. That was a heavy. It was like a meat stick and a half. And like a 9 foot spinning rod. I was like, yeah, I'm not putting a bait reel, bait casting reel on a spinning rod, am I? <laughs> so we scrapped both of those. And then Saturday rolls along. After my soccer game, uh, we went to Pacific Angler. Uh, and we're like, hey, uh, my rod broke yesterday. Do you guys, and do you guys have any. Uh, Replacements, like you know, anything along the lines of a 10 foot 6 medium heavy rod. So they came up with three options for me. They gave me and they came up with this exact replica of the rod that broke. They came up with a Trophy XL 10 foot 6 medium heavy. I forgot the rest of the details about it. And then they gave me this uh, G Loomis, uh, it was a 10 foot 6 medium. And so I was like, you know what, scrap the Fenwick, that rod broke, I don't want to use that again. So it left me with the trophy and the G Loomis. So Alex really put it down to if you do multi, if you're a multi-species angler, because if you are, then he said do the G Loomis, because when you fight your pinks on the G Loomis and Coho, it'll be a really fun fight, because the rod's a medium, so you know have more bend in it. You know you'll actually fight the fish instead of just hauling it in on a medium heavy rod. So that was one pro for the for the G Loomis, but the pro for the Trophy XL was. Since it's medium heavy, it allows you to fight bigger fish, then he like, feels like, yeah, go for the trophy, then you'll catch much larger, you can catch big fish without risk, without really risking your rod breaking. 
And you know, I do a lot, I did a, I've been doing a lot of chum salmon fishing over the last couple of years during the fall, every fall. We do chum salmon fishing a lot. You know, we also do a lot of salmon fishing. And it was only recently, this year, this season, when I really got to go Chinook salmon fishing for the first time, where I landed my first two White Harrison Chinooks, those big 20 pounders, and my first cohos. And after realizing that, I, was, I thought about it, and I was like, yeah, I'm definitely a multi-species angler. So we, I, the G Loomis was $500, but they gave us a sale on it, for, and we got it for like 440 something like that. So the Geolumus rod here, it's, an S it's a Geolumus STR1263 GL3, it's a bait casting model. Um, it is a 10 foot 6 medium, so yes it's on medium heavy, and I like my medium heavy rods because rods are tied to your fish, but this rod, if you know what you're doing and you're experienced, then you, you, are, you definitely have the capabilities to land your bigger chums and like Chinooks, you just got to be a little careful with it. Otherwise, it will break because this rod doesn't have as much of a backbone. So, you know, the line rating on it, 6 to 12 pounds. For me, the line rating doesn't mean too much to me because I haven't actually really like thought about it that much. But what I usually do is I just add 10 pounds to that range. And, you know, if you have a line weight between that ballpark, then you're fine. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's what I've done here. So my reel that I've got... Same reel as the video, you know. I'm still rocking the Johnny Morris Carbon Light 2.0 left-handed reel from three years ago. Um, it's spooled with Maxima 20. Uh, it's the Maxima Ultra Green 25 pound mono. So that's scared me. Holy shit! That's uh, this right here. It's a 660 yard spool, so it gives me a chance to refill my uh, spool many times. And we've got a pretty standard setup here. We've got a float fishing setup here. We've got my five and a half inch mild firmness float down to a three quarter ounce pencil lead. There is supposed to be a bead here that protects the weight from hitting on the knot, but it probably broke off after my last fishing trip, so I forgot to replace that. Down to my size square barrel swivel, and then here we have 20 pound mono. And it comes down to a pink head, pink body jig. So, you know, in my old video, my old set of video, uh, one of you guys asked, it was Second Life that asked, three days ago, uh, at fishing in BC with CJ, it was great watching you catch all this chum and fishing, and uh, out fishing everyone on the river from the video anyways, but why are you using heavier uh, leader, 30 pound, and mainline, 25 pound? Don't you want the leader to break the floor of the mainline? Or am I missing something? Thanks. Great question, Second Life. So, as I said, I'm a multi-species angler, and when I was younger, I wasn't able to tie all the knots I know how to tie now. I couldn't tie, you know, my improved clinch knots, my palomar knots, my bait loop knots. I couldn't tie any of those when I was younger. I just had no clue what the fuck I was doing. I just made a huge random knot and hope it worked. Most of the time, it did not work, right? Um, it was only recently, this year, that I decided to downsize because I realized that as I was growing, I didn't need to use such a strong line because I was more capable of controlling the rod, controlling the fish, controlling the line in the water. So I downsized from a 30 down to a 25. So now my main line is 25 pounds and my mono leader is a 20. And um, you know, some, some might ask, why don't you use braid and that type of stuff. I'm not a big fan of braid, um, you know, Tying with braid is nice, like to tie knots, but when I'm trying to feed my braid through my floats, my weight, it's too fucking limp. It just gets stuck, and it takes you way too long to get set up. And you know, the less time you're in the water, the less time you're catching fish, right? So that's why I run with mono. Easy to tie, easy to set everything up. And the thing is with mono as well is when you snag on snag on a rock or on the log, you know, mono has stretch to it. So if it stretches past that point, it just breaks. You don't lose, you don't, and you hopefully don't lose everything. You just lose your leader because it's weaker than your main line. But with braid, since you know it has no stretch to it, you know you just you have no choice but to cut, and you lose everything. And it's like, god damn it, that's a pain in the ass. So that's so that's my bait uh, casting setup, float fishing. Actually, one thing, if I did want to make this a, uh, if I did cast row with this, like fish geared row, then I'd switch up this leader and tie one of my pre-tied uh, leaders with a bait loop knot uh, on a uh, size 2 octopus hook made by Gamakatsu. 
So that's the only difference that there would be is the hook, basically. My spin casting setup, so this is what I use my twitch jigs, my spoons, spinners, all that type of stuff is right here. Okay, so it's a Okuma SSP, it's their salmon spin rod. It is a 8 foot 6 medium heavy action rod, 10 to 20 pound line rating. So I've, and the reel I've paired it with is a Shimano Slade 4000 FT. So I've got this spool with 25 pound mono, so that would be this spool right here. It's, tri it's Berkeley's uh, Trilene Big Cast right here, 270 yard spool. Great stuff, works really nice, works really well. Haven't had any issues with it. The raw, the reel itself is eight years old, and it has not. I've never had a single issue with it in my life. Like, I don't know what's up with Shimano stuff, but I swear that stuff just doesn't really break unless like you actually broke it yourself, like where you like took a hammer and just fucking whacked it. Okay, <laughs> but <laughs> I've never had any issue with Shimano reels. You know, even though it looks scratched up and banged up and scuffed, it works perfectly fine. So, after the rod reel, after this main line, we come down to a liter. So again, another barrel swivel here, and it comes to 12 pound liter. So when I twitch jigs for cohos, you know, 20 pound main line is fine. For my liter, I like anything from like 10 to 18 pounds. Um, again, some of it has to depend with where I'm fishing, how fast the water is, because depending on how fast the water is, and you have to fight the water and the fish as well, but if you're fishing something a little slower, then you can use something a little lighter. So, I'm using Berkeley's Trilene Big Game Mono, this 12 pound spool right here. If I'm fishing for pinks and I'm using this rod, I'll, I'll, set, it, I'll set up a float setup with the exact same lines though. But the leader I would use is either 8, 8 pound strand or 20 pound suffix or uh, 10 pound suffix. Um, those, you know, they work great for pinks. Pinks, they're smaller fish. You don't have to go with 20 pound mono. That's just fucking overkill. Um, if you want to play it safe, then go with the 12 pound mono. That would probably be your best bet. So after doing the rod and reels, let's do some. Let's talk about some terminal tactics. So, you know, here we've got a variety of floats. We've got, you know, the squishy float. We've got this firm, firmer float. We've got a clear float. We've got this rock solid float. You know, so as we see here. Floats, they come in different lengths as well, right? This is like six inches. This is like five and a half. I'd say this is maybe like... Sorry about that, but uh, here's the continuation of uh, the last part of the video. Sorry, my SD card ran in space. So we were talking about floats and the different types of floats. And uh, I got to the point where I think I was at this float. So um, this float is insanely squishy. So, I mean, the only problem with this is if you're um, if you were to hook into a big fish or something like that, and it cinched the time the line down tight, then um, this would split the float completely. Like it would cut right through it in half. That's why I like using these uh, somewhat denser floats, is because they don't they don't cut as much. And especially the ones where you need float stoppers, where the line runs right through, you have no risk of um, having your float split on you. It's completely fine, honestly. Um, a lot of floats also have to do with personal preference as well and also has to do with where you're fishing and how fast or slow the water is because the whole point of the float is to keep your rig off the bottom. So let's say you're fishing high waters, fast waters, then yeah, I'd use a bigger float because I'm going to use a much heavier weight because that's going to help get my, my setup down there. But if I'm fishing like the Squamish or the Momcom where it's, a, where it's slower, you know, water's not as fast, but yeah, it's uh, still deep, then I'd switch over to my mildly dense floats, because these things work great. You know, and if I'm fishing slow water, then you know what, yeah, I'd switch over to my tiny ass float, because that will get the job done. Um, and obviously, we've got these clear drift floats, so these are 30 gram floats, you get 20s, but I use the 30 gram floats so that I can use slightly heavier weights when I'm, when I'm fishing rivers that have faster water. So I'll use these a lot. Again, they require float stoppers at the top, at the bottom. The bottom ones aren't necessarily mandatory. The top ones you need so it doesn't keep sliding up your line. And I'll run two of them because if one breaks off, then you'll have a you'll have one you have an extra as a fail as a fail safe basically, so you don't have to cut and retie. So those are the floats. Next we'll move on to lead, pencil lead. So I have three types of pencil lead at home. Got this 3/8 ounce pencil lead coil here. 
I bought quarter. This sorry, it's so squished. Those are my best. And then I've got this super heavy, dense. Not too sure what diameter this is. To be honest, it's quite old. We've had this maybe quite three years, right? So I mean, it gets the job done though, right? So pencil head's great because if you snag up, since it's so like flexible, you can you, when you pull on it, it'll kind of bend one way or another. Eventually, you'll 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 loosen it and off it just free, uh, frees itself from the snag. Um, you know, I like my quarter the most because it's the good in between between these two. The three eighth is great for slower, shallower waters. Um, the super dense one, obviously, faster, deeper waters will help get it down there. This is the ultimate in between. All right, so let's say it's deep water but slow, then I'd use this. If it's you know slow water but somewhat fast, I'd use this. This is for deep and fast. This is for uh, shallow, slow. You can also use it for maybe shallow, moderately paced water as well. So that's lead. And then line, I think I went over line, I believe. I run 25-20. For pinks, I run 10-8. Um, on my twitching rod, I do 20-12, or I'll do 20-10. Depends, depends what I'm going after. And then we got swivels. So swivels, they just connect two pieces of line together. I know some guys who are capable of tying line-to-line -line knots. I don't know how the fuck they do it. But they do and they get it done, and it works. I could never trust myself trying to do that on the river which is why I use swivels. And then um, you come down to the jigs. So, you know, I've got a huge bag of, bag of jigs here, and I've got, God knows how many different colors they are. Pink, purple, green, blue, black, I'm pretty sure I have red, I have orange somewhere in there. And the whole point of having all these different colors is that uh, on the water, if one color doesn't work, you just switch out. You keep switching until you find something that produces. And once you find something that produces, you just stick with it, right? So, you know, let's say I'm chump salmon fishing, and I know that pink and purple works the best, but we're fishing at maybe one in the afternoon where there's a lot of people out, and everyone's just throwing pink and purple out, and the fish are like, they, they, they just, they see it. You know, they're like, okay, whatever. Uh, maybe I'll switch up to a green, or blue even, because if I throw something out different that's out of the ordinaire, then maybe, you know, they'll, they'll be more interested and they'll take it, right? So, you know, always pace to have different colors. Um, for, I, I, for all salmon across the board, I think like the ultimate universal color is probably like pink. Pink and purple. Green works exceptionally well for Chinook and Cohos. Pink works insanely for pinks, obviously. For Chum, pink and purple does the job. Purple is pretty good. For blue, blue is a Coho thing, really. And then I've got twitching jigs, obviously, so that's for Cohos, for Chinooks. And that's on my spinning setup that I've got here. If I'm not um, short floating jigs or twitching jigs, then I'm running with either my Palsy Fire tiered road eggs, which I would do on my float fishing rod, or I'm not tossing spoons. So um, I've got a couple of spoons here. I've got Gibbs spoons, I've got Coyote spoons, you know, I've got Coho spoons. Uh, oh, God knows how many more. So, um, this is made by, oh, <laughs> you guys don't know this brand, but it's RPR Environmental, they make spoons. They do come with trebles, so you have to pin, cut off the trebles, switch it to a single hook. Um, they work quite nice. Gibbs spoons, these tend to be a lot wider, much heavier, so they got a slow wobble to them. Um, they're great. Um, in deeper pockets of water, I'd say anywhere from like maybe 8, eight to 12 feet. Um, these Coyote three and a halfs are fantastic for shallower pools. You know when there's, you know they, they overall they just work well, and it always pays off to have a variety of different colors again. So you saw how that one was green and white. I'll have black and whites, silvers, golds. You know, find something that works for you. And when you find what works, then you just stick with it. And so aside from jigs, spoons, we also have Colorado blade spinners. So these things. I found out this year they work really well when you float fish these under a float for um, chum salmon these things slay like they, they like nine times out of ten will hook up on a fish <laughs> right um, they also work really well for coho when you're just normally just casting these out and retrieving they work nicely for pinks as well um, for chinook I haven't really tested this yet 
But uh, as far as I'm concerned, these things work really well for thumb salmon. Now we're on to the technology part now. So the camera that's filming me right now is a Apex cam. It shoots in 4K, 1080p, 60fps. It was $67, got it off Amazon. Um, it has 3,800 reviews, and of all those reviews, it sits at a 4.8 star rating, which is pretty damn good. Um, you know, I looked at some of the GoPros, $200, 250 300 I'm like, scrap that, I'll save $140, buy this $67 camera, and with the $140, I'll be able to buy more, <laughs> more gear that is not here on the table, you know. So, yeah, so that's one camera. The second camera that I've got here in this waterproof case, it's a Sony X... Exmor R steady shot here and it's got this clip on so it clips onto my fishing belt and I can adjust it so if I want to sit on my left hip then it's here if I want it to sit on my right then I just unscrew the bottom and I just flip it over just like that and then now bang it'll sit on my right hip um, this I used this to film some of my previous videos it works quite well only thing is when it gets foggy in here it gets super foggy like, you, you won't be able to clear up the fog, but that's just what it happens, right? Aside from that, um, only things that are really different are the rod, the camera that's filming me, and now the leaders I'm using. The leaders I'm using are no longer 30 pound leaders, I'm using 20s. Aside from that, um, you know, it is a week and two days until Christmas, everyone. So, if you guys have any fishing buddies that are, you know, big on fishing in the Pacific Northwest, then yeah, I encourage you to, you know, make a small little gift, a gift basket of them with like, you know, a little couple floats, some gear, a couple spoon spinners, jigs, some line, you know, some pencil lead. Um, these are also quite important. You need um, lead cutters to cut your lead, maybe even a set of pliers. These are some nice Victorinox pliers made by Swiss Army that my dad gave me. You know, maybe a couple spinners, maybe a rod and reel, who knows? But I encourage you guys to go for Christmas, buy your friends, your fishing buddies, some gear, you know, make sure everyone has a good holiday. And, you know, aside from that, I'll link everything down in the description below. Um, for some of the spoons, I won't be able to link because I have no clue where the hell I got them from. The floats, um, just go Pacific Angler, you'll see them there. Um, rods, all that stuff I can link, all the line I'll link, cameras I'll link. Aside from that, everybody have a good one, good luck, and tight lines.